world is listening. Is it easy? Is it hard? It's hard. Yes, it's, it is very hard. So I would like you to listen. I have a story I'm going to tell you. And I would like you to please listen to that story. Once upon a time, there was a great city named Glum that stood behind a lake in the kingdom of Gong. In the centre of the city was a castle where the king lived with his only daughter, Christina. The king could no longer walk, but he was often seen being pushed around the city in a white wheeled chair by his servants. Christina was a popular princess, happy and always willing to help others. The people of Bung often commented that she would make a good queen. Now it so happened that as well as the king, his daughter and his subjects, there lived in the kingdom of Bung two witches. Groga, an ugly, disfigured witch, lived on the other side of the lake in a dark, damp cave. Gwendolyn, a beautiful witch who wore a gown that sparkled with the light of a thousand crystals, lived in a house to the west. On the 10th anniversary of Groga's arrival, the king was wheeled onto his balcony where he addressed those gathered below. Who will rid the kingdom of my arch enemy, Groga, he asked. Many brave men have ventured forth on this mission before, but none of those sent have returned. Do any of you have courage to complete this deed? The crowd included knights from all the surrounding lands. Their proud horses neighed at the ruler's words, but only one in the crowd spoke out, a stranger who had arrived the day before. I will kill her, said the stranger, in return for your crown. The king replied, that is too much to ask. But I will give you half of all the gold in the city treasury if you rid the kingdom of her. The stranger accepted the offer and went to see the beautiful Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn was impressed by the stranger's boldness and she agreed to help in return for a share of the king's gold. She went into another room where she mixed a strange potion. This she poured into a small green bottle. This will give you the strength of ten men, she said, no. handing the potion to the stranger. The stranger travelled from Gwendolyn's house to the dark caverns on the opposite side of the lake, where Groga, who had seen her fate in a crystal ball, was waiting. So, you have come as many men before you have, she said, seeking the king's favour. They fought for many hours, but the witch was no match for her adversary. Eventually, tired and exhausted, she agreed to leave the kingdom forever. The stranger returned to the city to claim the promised reward. I have 15 questions for you. <laughs> you will need uh, either a pen and paper or a device. To, uh, to put down your answers, so you will need that. <laughs> so I hand it to your neighbour, so do you need some pen and paper? Uh, I'd like you to do it on your own, please. To fully benefit from this exercise. Yeah? Here is the first question. And your statements are either answered true or false. Please, no conferring. <laughs> so, no conferring. So you're not allowed to talk to anyone else about your own answer. Yeah? So you answer the question yourself, true or false, to, uh, to confirm. I'll get you some paper. You don't have to do it on your hand. Hang on, I'll put that some together. The city was called Bung. True or false? Write down. The city was called Bung. Please note, no shouting out answers or conferring. City was what? City was called Bong. 
Number two, the city was ruled by an old king who could no longer walk. Old king who could no longer walk. True or false? True. Again, please. <laughs> for, the, for the purposes of this exercise, and I don't normally ask you to not answer questions out loud, the purpose of this exercise, please, your own answer on your own page. Number three, the castle was in the center of the city. <laughs> True or false? True or false? Number four, Groga was a wicked witch who lived in a cave on the other side of the lake. What? <laughs> Groga was a wicked witch who lived in a cave on the other side of the lake. <clears throat> Number five, Princess Christina was very beautiful. Please, 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 please. Princess Christina was very beautiful. Number six, the stranger was a knight from far away. Don't answer. Write it down. Stranger was a knight from far away. Number seven, the stranger wanted to be made king in return for killing Groga. You see, the stranger wanted to be made king in return for killing Groga. Number eight, the king offered the stranger a great fortune instead. King offered the stranger a great fortune instead. Number nine, a good witch lived to the west of the city. A good witch lived to the west of the city. Number 10, the stranger agreed to give Gwendolyn half of his gold if she helped him. <coughs> what? what was that? The stranger agreed to give Gwendolyn half of his gold if, he, if she agreed to help him. Half what the gold to do what? <laughs> the stranger agreed to give Gwendolyn half of his gold if she helped him. Number 11. Gwendolyn mixed a potion which she poured into a green bottle. Number 12. What was on the letter to get? So no, I didn't get it. Gwendolyn mixed a potion which she poured into a green bottle. Number 12. The stranger rode from Gwendolyn's house to Groga's cave. And who's number 12? The stranger rode from Gwendolyn's house to Groga's cave. Number 13, Groga had killed many other men before. Oh, oh. Who's number 13? That was number 13. Groga had killed many other men before. Yes. Number 14, Groga's magic was no match for the stranger. Groga's magic was no match for the stranger. The stranger used a 
magic potion to defeat Rogak. The stranger used a magic potion to defeat Rogak. Here are the answers, please. Of course, the answer is either true or false. No other option. All false. <laughs> All false. Oh, interesting. The first one, the city was called Bon, true or false? True. False. 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 The city was called Glum. The kingdom was Bon. It is false. False is the right answer. Number two, the city was ruled by an old king who could no longer walk. True, 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 false. false. Why false? False. He didn't say he couldn't walk, but he's always seen pushing the chair. In interesting, yes. It, uh, it did actually say he could no longer walk. He didn't say true. True, It's false. It said that he was, um, <coughs> I'm reading for you. He was old. It did not say he was old. No longer the king could no longer walk. Never mentioned how old he was. Number two is false. Number two is false. Five. Ah, interesting. Welcome to the world of being a consultant. <laughs> the castle, number three, the castle was in the center of the city. True, well done, true. Just when you thought it all were false. Number four. Rogan was a wicked witch who lived in a cave on the other side of the lake. False. Never mentioned. Never mentioned she was wicked. She was ugly and disfigured. Does not mean she was wicked. False. Four false. Number five, Princess Christina was very beautiful. Yes. False. False. She was popular. She was happy. She was willing to help others. She wore a, wore a gown. Never mentioned she was beautiful. It's talking about in general beauty. Again, welcome to the world of consulting. Number five, or summer six, the stranger was a knight from far away. False. False. He was a stranger. And actually, ironically, we don't actually know, it never mentioned that it was a he. A very, a very interesting bias that we actually have, but it never actually mentioned that he was a he. That's a clue to another question that's coming up. Thank you very much. Number seven. The stranger wanted to be made king in return for killing Groya. False. Well done. I don't know why you just said false. He asked for the crown, but doesn't say anything about wanting to be made king. Eight. This, the king offered him a great fortune. False. False. He said half of gold. Half of gold. We don't know it could be half of nothing. Yeah. <laughs> false. Eight is false. Nine. Let's focus. Nine. A good witch lived to the west. No. She left in west, but she would not mention that she was Well done. Absolutely. Did not say she was good, but we do know she lived in the west. Did not say she was good. Anyone think they heard this story before? Interesting. What about Sleeping Beauty or something like that? Oh, yes. Number 10. Number 10. The stranger agreed to give Gwendolyn half of his gold if she helped him. False. False. Yes. He said he would give a share or she would give a share. Again, this is another indication. We're not told it was the he. Ten says he, but we don't know. Eleven, Gwendolyn mixed a potion which she poured into a green bottle. True. Well done. True, true. Twelve. She went to that other room and... Yep, but it's true. Twelve, the stranger rode from Gwendolyn's house to Grover's cave. We were never told that the stranger rode. It said traveled. 
13, false is 12 is false. 13, Roga had killed many men before. False. Roga's magic was no match for the stranger. False. We not we never told she used magic. And 15, the stranger used a magic potion. False. No, no, they used it. How come? How come we all made mistakes? Because that's what I feel. Okay. Well. Yeah, interesting. We, we, we might have heard the good witch, bad witch story. You know, we might have seen Wicked or the Wizard of Oz or whatever it might be in the past. And we've, and, and again, just like when we're consulting, we might think we've seen this same problem before. We might think we've approached the same challenge before. But of course, every business challenge is unique in its own way. And we need to watch our assumptions, lots of assumptions. And there's a great strategy over here, insufficient information. Yeah? Now, of course, I only gave you true or false as options. This is a really great viewpoint. How can I find out more information? How can I delve deeper? How can I test my assumptions? How can I ask more questions so that I actually find out more detail? Listening burns more calories than speaking. How come? Truly listening burns more calories than speaking. We have to concentrate on everything. Yeah. Our blood pressure goes up. Our pulse quickens. It's a really active piece. Now let's look at that. What do you think? In hindsight, now obviously given the confines of me saying, what was my what were my instructions to you? In that story, what were my instructions? Listen, as I said, please listen to this story. Yeah. Now, what got in the way of us listening? Distractions. Distractions? What sort of distractions? Which living in West? What was that? <laughs> that which living in West, the brown she is being with. The rest of the town, she has nothing to do with the story. <laughs> <laughs> So all the details might have got in the way. Beautiful. Yes, absolutely. Lots of words, bong and glom and things like that. Very easy to mix up. Lovely. Yeah. And, and this is quite deliberate. Yeah. Gwendolyn and Roga. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Again, it's quite strategic in that. But of course, that's what life is like, you know? There's all these little things out to get us all the time. What else got in the way of actively listening? Previous experience. Previous experience, lovely, absolutely. I've heard the story before. Or maybe a barrier like, oh, Jill's off on one of her tangents again. <laughs> or, you know, well, this story is not relevant. I didn't come here to listen to a fairy tale. Or whatever you might have been thinking, I don't really mind, but whatever you might have been thinking here, I asked over here, you know, I saw some confused faces, and I said, well, what, what do you think what this is all about? I have no idea. <laughs> and that switches us off, you know? Oh, I don't like where this manager is going. I'm not interested in this. This is not relevant to me. Oh, this is not important. We, we, and in our mind, we switch off. And then your point in terms of how challenging it is, we have what we call working memory, which means that our mind can only remember at very most five plus or minus two things at any one time. And I'm asking you to remember 15 pieces of information. We can, have, a, 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 in our optimum mind, we can remember seven. In our not so optimum mind, that's about three. So what do you think? In another situation, interacting, active listening, what could you have done so that you could increase the amount of information you would remember? Taking notes, well done. What else? Attention to detail. Lovely, absolutely. So really thinking about some of the detail. What Recording else? Recording decision. Recording question. Oh, okay, yeah. How many times are we going to be able to record a client conversation? 
repeating this. Lovely, absolutely. So we think about those micro skills of listening that we identified earlier on. We think about summarizing. Recording, recording the. Listen, yeah, but in, in, in work, <coughs> how many opportunities will you have to record? Not many. Not many. Because sometimes, sometimes you could record something that's confidential. That's exactly it. We're challenges about it. We have privacy agreements and all sorts of things. And, you know, no one has the time, so excuse me while I just hit record. You know? And when are you going to listen to it again? You know? It's a huge challenge. Exactly. So it's a, it's a big challenge for us. We've got to rely on the skills that we're using in the moment. Yeah. So summarizing, repeating, stopping and saying okay, or even the speaker summarizing. But in the absence of me summarizing, we've got to actively do something. What else could have made it easier for you to remember? If we had knew the good test in the end. <laughs> and how do you know? <laughs> It's, it's the thing, you don't, you don't know where your client is going and what's important and, yeah. I mean, you know, it would be great if we knew everything at the, at the beginning of a consultation, but we don't. <laughs> sneakiness, client sneakiness, yes. Are you, aware that, are you aware that churches sometimes have board meetings? Lots of people have board meetings. But the thing is, because I'm using church for example, churches have board meetings, yes. discuss their business, and most of the time they take their minutes. Yes, great. Oh, lovely. Beautiful. So well, what's the purpose yeah. of taking the minutes? Yeah. What do you think? To refer back? Yes. And it's, it's similar to taking notes. So people can actually remember what's being said. And we take it for granted. We really do take it for granted, the fact that, oh, I'll remember this. But without our notes in our client meetings, we actually don't. So listening is hard work. And we have got to be aware of our, our failures as a human. Our brain also takes a little micro nap after about 55 seconds. <laughs> so we've got, to, we've got to compensate for these sorts of things. We've got to take notes. We've got to ask questions. Yeah. So Jill, hang on. Is the kingdom glum or is the kingdom bomb? Now, I didn't give you the opportunity to ask questions. But we've got to think about finding them or consulting, finding opportunities to ask questions so we clarify, so we confirm, so we check. We summarize for us, for them, and we think about them listening for the feelings and the emotions because we remember those things. We remember how someone made us feel. We remember the, in the inter interaction we might have actually had. So all these things really help us to uh, connect with others.